I want to welcome you to Dream Chasers Radio with me, your host, Yaya Diamond. What's up, people? How you doing? It is a great day. And I'm so very excited to be here. And I'm so very excited to be with my next two guests today. That's right. We have two guests, two authors. I love authors. I absolutely love authors. I think they're the most intelligent people on earth because they get to describe things and show us things and teach us things and I mean, just amazing. And this next book we're going to be talking about is called Jerusalem and is with authors, uh, Mr. Weiss and Grustein. I I hope I said that right. Fine. (laughs) Awesome. Awesome. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. How are you? Thank God. Well, thank you. Awesome. Awesome. So um, let's start with one of you guys. Tell us about yourselves. Oh, I, my name is Farley Weiss. I was, I'm an attorney, an intellectual property attorney, and I was the former national president of the National Council on Israel, for, uh, currently chairman of the Israel Heritage Foundation. And I was involved with Senator Kyle's office in 1995 when he decided to make a priority when he got elected to the Senate to do legislation to move the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. And I was like the main Jewish liaison to his office during the whole process. I kept all the faxes and I we honored him at a dinner, two dinners in a row, two years in a row, the first time, uh, uh, two months after the passage of the legislation. And then the next one, a year later, we got the mayor of Jerusalem to come to Phoenix to thank him for his efforts on uh, the legislation to move the embassy to Jerusalem. And then I was at the embassy opening in Jerusalem in uh, 2018. And I was uh, saw the emotional reaction of people there of how excited they were to be at this historical event. And I, at that time, I decided that it would be really great to document this whole history of this uh, important uh, uh, matter and to have a book written about it. And then I, uh, uh, Len moved uh, nearby and he showed me articles he wrote and what a great writer and researcher he was. And I talked with him about the idea. And he was said he was happy to uh, to really spend the time and effort to uh, work on putting it together. That is so cool, Mr. Grustein or Grustein, right? I, I mean, how, how do you pronounce your name? Grustein. Grustein, yes. Grustein, awesome. Tell us about yourself. Please call me Len. Okay, all right, Len. And Farley for me. And Farley, awesome. I'm Yaya. Ah. <laughs> it's Yahaloma. <laughs> oh, beautiful diamond. Thank you. Thank you. Diamond, it's, diamond. It's, yeah, yeah, it means diamond. <laughs> <laughs> yep, definitely, definitely. So tell us about yourself, Lou. Uh, I'm a re- recovering lawyer. I retired yeah. a while ago. <laughs> and then oh, I went goodness. into banking. Uh, I did some interesting work, uh, including in all sorts of different types of lending, including Sharia compliant lending. Uh, halachic lending and of course ordinary lending and I've written extensively about it and I met Har- uh, Farley and we had some very very deep interesting discussions about all kinds of things and uh, then we decided to partner to write this book and Harley Farley brought over a whole pile of papers from his time uh, in Arizona with Senator John Kyle and then later on in Florida with uh, Governor DeSantis. And uh, and I'm looking through the papers and I can't get over it, uh, especially uh, when I read some of the uh, written materials from Senator John Kyle, because uh, Senator Kyle was not Jewish. Uh, he didn't have a Jewish constituency of any real substance. And people kept asking him, John, why are you interested in this? Why is this your priority to enact this law that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel and to move the embassy there? And his answer was succinct, brilliant, and delicious. He said, because it's just and right. And that's how we got the title of the book. And then we decided, you know what? If he can say it, we're going to show why. And so we go back in history to the very beginning and bring it forward and talk about why it's just and right. Wow. You know, it, it's like I'm looking at the cover of the book. Whose idea was that? It was uh, the idea came from me. I was at the embassy opening and I look back at my pictures from there and I had a picture from the Marine Color Guard uh uh, when it came out, uh, and I, 
but there was a little somebody somebody in the picture and Amazon was able to find a uh, a photo that they could use from the same type of picture that I had that didn't have somebody in the picture and was just of the of the Marines. And I thought it was a iconic picture with the um, half American flag and Israeli flag in the background and, uh, and the Marines there at the uh, at the event. Wow. Uh, the the opening. This, you know, this is iconic because of what's going on now in Jerusalem and what was, uh, you know, the president that was set with the moving of the embassy and you being there. And then, I mean, Lou, you, you've done some stuff. I I've mean, done, I, I'm looking yeah. at it going, what an oxymoron. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, you kind of surprised me there, but this, <laughs> this here is beautiful. So. When you guys sat down and you wrote this book, tell me what it was like because the, the collaboration, you guys are coming from do two different things. You're you, I mean, you know, Farley, you're you got the law, you got everything, and then Lou, you got the Sher uh or Sharita, the the, Sharia, the, the, Len, the by and, way. and the Muslim. Yes. Oh and, my gosh. And and what's really truly inspirational is that if you go back in time. Everyone agrees. If you go through the Quran and uh, until it becomes uh, what we call political theology, but if you start with the real religions, everyone agrees, whether it's in the Quran, it's in the New Testament, it's the Old Testament. Everyone believes the Jewish people are supposed to be there because Israel belongs to the Jewish people. What's very interesting is Pastor Hagee, and we cite him in the book, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he has a very, very nice way of looking at it. He goes, we all agree that in the final days, uh, the Jewish people are supposed to be in Israel. We all agree on that. He goes, what happens next? Somebody's going to have to make a little bit of a theological adjustment. But until then, hey, we're all in this together. <laughs> you know what? He's right. He's right. He is definitely right. I mean, we all agree that Jerusalem does belong to the Jewish people. That's why it's called Jerusalem. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> to me, it's like, it makes no, it's like, duh. You know, no, at the same it's time, funny. it's like, you know, of course, like, okay, so the, the United States is a melting pot of a lot of different nationalities and people from different countries that have come here to seek, um, you know, whatever they, that the life that they, they wanted to seek. I believe that when you go back, when you, when you make that hiatus back to Jerusalem, or when you make your hiatus back to wherever you want to go to, that land belongs to those people. Um, originally, this land belonged to the Indians that lived here. And mm -hmm. so, you know, we, we have to say that, you know, if there is a foreigner in the United States, it's us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so Jerusalem belongs to Jerusalem, just like the United States belongs to the Indians. Mm -hmm. And there is nothing, there is no question about it. Everybody knows, but nobody wants to agree on that because everybody wants a piece of something. And it's unfortunate because everyone is welcome there and the Israeli government is not trying to kick anybody out. It's just has sovereignty. Yeah. Now, you, you want to move there? You're welcome. People come from all over the world. Uh, Israel. There are few countries in this world that are very diverse and welcoming. The United States is one of them. Uh, Australia, New Zealand, uh, and Israel. Mm -hmm. And it's among the most diverse countries in the world. Um, I have relatives from all over, from Ethiopia to India, um, from all over the world. And uh, every, they all live in Israel. Mm -hmm. And they have a wonderful life there. And um, so we have to distinguish between the legal title and sovereignty and um, who, the fact that everyone is welcome and can live there. And when you get into this issue of, well, I want to own it. I want to own it. Do me a favor. Let's all live and let live. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So the book, let's talk about that for a second, because I really, really am interested, you know, what is the main goal of this, of this book? What was it that you guys saw that you had to say? I think that one of the goals was this was something that 
the Jewish people, you know, when the Jews pray, they face towards Jerusalem. That in their prayers, they talk about returning to Jerusalem. And after being banished from Jerusalem 2,000 years ago, they and, and all these attacks on Jews throughout history of pogroms and uh, expulsions and a Holocaust, the Jews came back to their land and, and reestablished a state. And then you have the one superpower in the world recognizing the Jewish sovereignty over Jerusalem was an extraordinary part of history. And, and so the idea of doing the book was to talk about what led to that decision, why, and then to establish that it was the correct decision and, and do it in a thorough way. And especially when you hear so much falsehoods in the media today and so many attacks that, um, that people need to know and have a source for the information about it. And I think it's like a very riveting story because you see, uh, you know, people think, oh, well, all the Jews are supporting this. Well, and actually, there were a lot of Jews who weren't so, so supportive of it in the uh, State Department. Or, and, and you had Senator Kyle being the leader, and he was pretty much an unknown. People don't really realize that he did all this stuff because he wasn't someone grabbing, trying to grab headlines for himself. And uh, so we wanted to really let people know about what he did on it. And his staff, who I worked with as well, that had played an important role. And and I think that it's a it's a it's a very significant story. And also, when they actually did the move of the embassy, and recognized Jerusalem, the people thought it was going to lead to all this violence. And instead, it led to the Abraham Accords and led to peace peace uh, agreements with their Arab countries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a, another underlying theme: uh, we we can't predict the future. No, but we can recognize that nothing is by chance there's a there's a plan god has a plan and it's amazing how when you look backwards you look at your own life you look at world history how things just fall into place and there's a certain inevitability that good will occur in the end uh, it doesn't always seem that way <laughs> along the way but it's amazing how when you look backwards, you can see seminal events occurring and players coming from almost out of nowhere to perform seminal roles in order to make the thing happen. I'm reminded uh, in uh, the Megillah of Esther and Mordechai when he has this conversation with Esther and he says to her, look, I don't know how you got into this position, but you're here. That's right. And it's it's pretty amazing. So hopefully, if you do this, it will have a good result and everything will work out. And by the way, look, if you decide not to, somebody else will do it because it's going to happen. But you're here, so you ought to perform that mission. And I do believe we're all put on this earth and we all have our own unique mission. And if we can see it and perform it, wow it makes a difference in the world. And so each of us can make a difference in the world. And when you look at all the, because we tell the story, when you look at all the individuals and all the moving parts, there were many good people who made a difference in order to have this good result achieved. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. You just reminded me of Purim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I want some commentation. Um, okay, so I, I literally, I, I literally, think that this is the the entire thing is like we all have to be one undivided and of the same mind if if you are then we can do so much together then we can ever do a part and so i i love the concept of the book i love the fact that you guys were there i love the fact that you guys came together and did this together this was what was this like as you meshed the ideas and you got it together and you wrote the last chapter? What was that like for you? <laughs> well, you know, Len is, is he's such an extraordinary researcher. There are things that he knows multiple languages, looking up things in the original language and putting this uh, work together. And I had all these materials with me. And I think that, uh, you know, we have an expression of like, uh, it was like uh, God did the, 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 the relationship together that I had these materials and Len had this ability to research and put together. I mean, how many footnotes are in the book? 980. 
980 footnotes. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's unbelievable. And the people are reading it and telling us how interesting the footnotes are. And what we did, which is unlike many books, is the footnotes are on the page where we cite the footnotes. Oh, so that's you can cool. actually read them. Why instead of people see footnotes and they never look back at them because it's like kind of inconvenient. They actually are on the page of, the, of what the material is. And the footnotes, a lot of them are very important, but he felt like we should keep them as footnotes. Yeah, yeah, I can't help myself. Uh, I was always taught, don't trust me, look it up. <laughs> so there it is. That's right. <laughs> so it's a right. very, very documented. And it just, uh, and when you get getting to the point of finishing it and seeing it uh, published and and how nicely it came out and and getting the forwards we got and the, from Senator Kyle, a forward for the book and blurb from Senator Joe Lieberman and Alan Dershowitz and uh, Ambassador David Friedman and uh, Governor Mike Huckabee and other people who did it, did blurbs for our book. We were very excited to get such important people to uh, say that they, uh, they thought this was an important book for people to read. We had a very interesting benefit. There were a lot of files that were declassified by the State Department. Uh, they're not well indexed, so you got to go through it page by page. Uh, but there was some amazing stuff buried in those files. And uh, you can see how despite the best efforts of a lot of good people, they were frustrated uh, by a department that had its own mind. And uh, they drank their own Kool-Aid to the point where I think they got drunk. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So it didn't always... Uh, happened the way it should have. For example, it took 22 years after the law was passed for the Jerusalem to be recognized and for the embassy to be moved. And during that time, uh, there were waivers that were consistently exercised by the president because the State Department, which was in charge of this, kept on saying, well, you know, it's not the right time. It's not the right time. It was never the right time, and part of it was their worldview, uh, which um, was problematical because they really didn't believe in it. And it's interesting, uh, if you go back to the original recognition of Israel by President Truman, uh, the thought process was not that different. It was, it was almost uncanny how similar the discussions were about recognizing Israel and about recognizing Jerusalem. Um, and they, many of them thought it was a mistake, even though we all know it's not. And yet they couldn't get out of their own way. Uh, and Ambassador Friedman said something wonderful to us. He said, you know, um, the prophecies say that peace will emanate from Jerusalem. And it did. Mm -hmm. And the Abram Accords and all these wonderful things. Now, I represented... Uh, all sorts of people from all over the world, including from the Emirates, from Saudi Arabia, from Egypt, because people are people and people can get along, uh, especially when their worldview is based on enlightened self-interest, which is, it's my interest if we do something together, because we could both do get better if we work together. And so there was a lot of business that was being done, uh, and yet, they couldn't make that leap to saying, hey, we're really getting along. Why don't we actually have a treaty between us and do formal trade as opposed to all this informal business? And after Jerusalem was recognized by the United States, magic happened because a lot of countries said, hey, why not? If the U.S. can do that, then we could do it too. Yes. And a lot of wonderful things occurred as a result of that. And hopefully it will continue. We'll get past, God forbid, what happened on October 7th. It should never be repeated again. Um, and hopefully it's a step towards the kind of peaceful relations and enlightened self-interest that makes the world go round. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't even want to think about October. Mm-hmm. I don't even want to think about it. I have friends on both sides and a family on both sides. Mm -hmm. It's, it's uh, because I'm mixed. I'm mixed with both. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like I'm going against myself here at sometimes. But I, I think that 
um, being that I am mixed with both and I'm part African as well, it, it shows that one person can live and dwell in all three lands at once mm-hmm. in harmony. Wow. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but, but I have to, I, I do have to say that, you know, it was historical of this moment, this moment that you wrote about. This book should be a history book. You know, it reminds me of, it, it literally reminds me of, I okay, so I went to Mississippi in 2026 early in that year. And people were looking at me weird as I walked down the street to go to Walmart. Get into Walmart, I need a cup. Because at that time I was on tour with Glenn Leonard, the former singer of The Temptations. So we we were on tour. We were doing the Motown show. And I was one of the vocalists and I, I went in to go get a cup. My mug broke. And we're on we're on the road. I need a three dollar cup. Nothing fancy, because if I break it again, I don't want to have to go fret crazy. And I asked this lady, Caucasian lady, where the mugs were. And a black lady came up to me and said, she will not talk to you. Oh, my um, God. And Mississippi. In your own country, you're not welcome where you were born, even though you're not originally, you know, your ancestors or whatever or not, but you are American or you were born in Jerusalem and you are, you know, Jerusalem Jewish or of Jerusalem of Israel, Israeli. I know Jerusalem Jews and Israelis are a little bit different. There is a little technicality there, but you're still Israeli, right? So you walk into a place and a Jew says to the Israeli, they won't talk to you. You know, the division that we face on a daily basis. Now this, I didn't know they had not abolished slavery until the end of 2006 in Mississippi. Oh my God. Look it up. I know you guys don't know. A lot of people don't know, but 2006 is when they abolished slavery in Mississippi. We're, I mean, it's it's like, it's there. And I was like, I couldn't believe it. So I looked it up. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm crazy. I was walking in a state where I could have still been a slave. You know, and I, I look at this and I see the history of your book. I feel like Israelis, Jews, Israel has been in a state of trying to always break free and tell people, look, we are a nation. We're not enslaved by this nation or we're not liable to this nation or we're not, we are a people. And that's, I feel like this book and what you guys have witnessed and what you've done is historical. I don't know if that kind of coincides, but it reminds me of that. What, what do you guys say about that? That's beautiful. Wow. I mean, I think that, uh, it, I mean, to a certain extent, I was uh, surprised that no one else has really written about the subject. And uh, seeing how emotional and people thought it was the people at the embassy opening itself, uh, whether the Jewish and, or a Christian or whoever they were there, were like, it was like a religious experience. There were, it was the emotional reaction of people uh, was really quite extraordinary there, of the p- people who were crying uh, throughout the ceremony. And it was really uh, something I actually organized the first prayer service at the new embassy site Mm. uh, just before the, uh, the, the event happened. And, and uh, I had people texting me, I saw you on this, on this YouTube thing. And I was like, what do you, what do you mean you saw me? It was a video of it. So it was like, uh, I was like, oh my gosh, as I didn't realize that people were videotaping the first prayer service, that was such a big deal. I just was happy to have a prayer service before the ceremony. And so um, it, um, it's a very important to document and know history, and it's a uh, because uh, you, if you don't understand the history, then then you don't understand conflicts and don't understand the problems. Yeah, yeah, and you repeat it. Absolutely welcome and embraced in my dad's store. He had a small supermarket called Good Food. My dad, bless his memory, was a slave mm. in a German concentration camp. 
and then eventually in Auschwitz. And he survived miraculously. He, of course, had the number tattooed on his arm. He's in the history books of Queens because uh, they wrote about how the fact that he was the first co kosher supermarket. They called it an emporium, if you could believe it, in Queens uh, in 1962. And that how people would come in if they saw their, his number on his arm, uh, they would ask him about it. And so he was the first point of contact of many people in Queens about the Holocaust. When he came out of the camps, he was 50 pounds. Mm. And then he... Uh, recuperated in Italy. He spoke Italian, uh, which is why I have some facility in understanding it. It's funny sometimes. And uh, he, uh, his name in Hebrew was Moshe Yonatan. Uh, so they called him Johnny. Mm. And uh, he uh, did very well in Laurel, to, uh, in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where he first came. He met my mom there and they married. Uh, he used to be fired every Monday, because he wouldn't work on Saturday. And uh, finally, he worked for Westinghouse. And uh, the uh, head of Westinghouse took a liking to him because he could fix anything. And uh, so he maintained the generators of Milwaukee on Sundays. That was the offset. And early pictures of me are sitting on the generators as he's fixing them. <laughs> Wow. Well, and you know that, I mean, it's like, how would you say it's, it's emotional, mm -hmm. very emotional. You know, um, I understand. And, and I know a lot of people don't understand the, the plight that Jews had to make to get to where they are today. You know, I understand it completely because I, I, as a, as a black woman, most people see black. They don't see a mixture of black. They just see black. And a lot of black people are still in persecution today. And a lot of Jews are still in persecution today. Mm. And it's sad. It literally is sad. Look at, look at what happened last year. This is really bad. So to have this history makes me smile. Because this is something no one can take away. No one can take this away. This was done. This was a done deal. And it's beautiful. And to write about it is just gorgeous. Thank you. Thank um, you. Thank you guys so very much for doing this. You know, and in a point of you will go down in history for doing this. How does that feel to you? And what else would you like to say? Well, I think that, you know, we try to look at uh, God uh, putting us in these positions and you have opportunities and you want to take advantage of those opportunities and that why we were there. And I was in Phoenix with, with Senator Kyle and then I went and moved to Florida and, and then then Con Congressman DeSantis decided to make this a priority and held hearings on the moving the embassy to Jerusalem, went to Jerusalem to pick out and put me on an advisory council for advising him on the moving of the embassy to Jerusalem. And so I just happened to be kind of put in positions for, for this and then to be able to meet Len and to have us tell the story about it. And uh, I know on our website of JerusalemRecognition.com and that we are, you know, appreciate to be in this position to have this done and come to this time and to, and for you to give us this time to talk to you about it. It's beautiful. Hello. Uh, I, I just thank God uh, every day and any good that we can do. You know, uh, people talk about how uh, Descartes said, I think I, therefore I am. Mm -hmm. uh, Rene Pascal said to him, uh, excuse me, uh, the heart knows uh, what the mind can't understand. And my answer to that is that of Maimonides. We are what we do and we are here to do good deeds. And this hopefully is just one of many good deeds we can all do and leave our mark by our good deeds. Definitely. Thank you guys so much for being here. You know, we're going to go ahead and put the link JerusalemRecognition.com in the description box below. 
Um, if you're interested in teaching your children history, if you're interested in learning real history and what the truth really is, I mean, not what they tell you it is, but what it really is, then you need to go ahead and check this book out for yourselves. Thank you, gentlemen, so much for being here. And Baruch Atah Adonai for you guys being here. It's been such a pleasure. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. And until next time, guys. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.